Good evening. Welcome back to the Bible Study Tour. Episode 43. If you haven't yet, then please go and subscribe to my channel, Bible Studio Gaming. And hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when the next Bible video comes out. And leave a like if God uses to encourage you. Today we are looking at Jeremiah chapter 43 and his title, Jeremiah Taken to Egypt. As always, we will start with verse 1 and then we'll go all the way to verse 13 at the end of the chapter. Alright, let's begin. Jeremiah taken to Egypt. When, when Jeremiah finished speaking to all the people, all these words of the Lord, their God, with which the Lord, their God, had sent him to them, Azariah, the son of Hoshea, and Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the insolent men said to Jeremiah, You're telling a lie. The Lord of God did not send you to say, Do not go to Egypt to live there. But Barak, the son of Neriah, has set you against us to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they may kill us or take us into exile in Babylon. So Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the commanders, all the forces, and all the people, did not obey the voice of the Lord to remain in the land of Judah. But Johanan the son of Korea and all the commanders of the forces took all the remnant of Judah and returned to live in the land of Judah from all the nations to which they had been driven. The men, the women, the children, the princesses, and every person whom Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahikim, son of Shaphan, also Jeremiah the prophet, and Barak the son of Uriah. And they came into the land of Egypt, for they did not obey the voice of the Lord. And they arrived at Toponese. Top, then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and Toponese. Taking your Take in your hands, your hands, large stones, and hide them in the mortar, in the pavement that is at the entrance to Pharaoh's palace, in Taponis, Taponis, in the sight of the men of Judah, and say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and I will set his throne above these stones that I have hidden. He will spread his royal canopy over them. We shall come and strike the land of Egypt, given over to the, pe given over to the pestilence, those who are doomed to the pestilence, to captivity, those who are doomed to captivity, and to the sword, those who are doomed to the sword. I shall kindle a fire in the temples of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them carry them away captive. And he shall clean the land of Egypt as a shepherd cleans his cloak of vermin. But he shall go away from there in peace. He shall break the ob obelisk of Heopolis, which is in the land of Egypt and the temples of the gods of Egypt. He shall burn with fire. All right, um, that's the, that's the passage. And, um, well, lots, lots of disobedience there. All right. Now we shall move on to the explanations. Starting with the explanation for verses 1 through 7. 
After Jeremiah told the people God's answer, Johanan and Azariah, the son of Hosea, and the other rude men accused Jeremiah of lying. They said that Jeremiah's scribe, Barrett the son of Uriah, was misleading him and that he wanted Babylon to kill them or take them into exile. Then Johanan, the son of Korea, and the other commanders disobeyed the Lord. They took all the people that returned to Judah from other nations to Egypt. They also took the remnant that the Babylonian commander left in the care of Galilee the governor. So they took everyone. And the commanders scorned the Lord's words because it wasn't the answer they wanted. So they accused Jeremiah of being a false prophet influenced by a scribe, Barak. The commanders were arrogant and thought they knew better than God. And they made their decision out of fear. They shouldn't have feared Babylon, but rather they should have feared God because he's all powerful and sovereign of the, the entire universe. They hated the truth, so they made excuses to deny it by insulting Jeremiah and falsely accusing him of being a false prophet. They also falsely accused Jeremiah and Barak of being Babylonian sympathizers who just wanted them to perish. But Jeremiah already knew that they weren't going to obey the Lord because throughout Jeremiah's prophetic ministry, nobody listened to him, even though all these prophecies were fulfilled as God said. The commanders foolishly left fled to Egypt because they thought they would be blamed for the murder of the governor, which was a murder they didn't commit. The commanders and the other people continued to disobey God, even though their disobedience cost them three waves of exile to Babylon, the destruction of Jerusalem, and loss of many Judean lives. You would think that the commanders and people would take a hint and listen to God's discipline at seeing all the things that their disobedience caused. But no, they decided they would continue to be stubborn. No, but no, they decided they would, they would continue to be stubborn idiots and continue and continue to get punished by God. So the commanders took all the remnant to Egypt and Jeremiah and Barak went with them. As Christians, when God tells us to do something, we need to be obedient to the Lord the first time. The key to showing our love for God is our disobedience. Is our, I mean, the key to showing our love for God is our obedience and trust in Him. And it is also important for strengthening our relationship with Him like Jeremiah, we as believers need to stand up for Jesus, no matter what the cause may be. Jeremiah followed and walked God faithfully throughout his prophetic ministry and stood firm on God's truth, regardless of the insults and persecution he endured. He knew that God would protect and defend him, even if we as believers do not reach the desired outcome a very person being saved, we need to stand firm on God's truth, regardless of persecution or insults. God may use your persecution for his, for his sake, so that non-believers may come to believe and be saved. Dying for Christ's sake is worth everything, because Christ is everything. Alright, moving on to the second and final explanation. For verses 8 through 13. Then the Lord told Jeremiah and Tapanese, Egypt, to hide some large rocks in the pavement at the entrance to Pharaoh's palace and the site of the men of Judah. The Lord wanted Jeremiah to tell them that he was sending King Nebuchadnezzar to set up his throne 
over the rocks. You would take the nation of Egypt and make it part of the <coughs> part of the Babylon Empire. Babylon has become and destroy the land of Egypt. And the people would die by disease and the sword of the Babylonians. He would take the Egyptians captive and burn their temples like the people of Jerusalem. He would destroy the temples of the false gods and idols of Egypt with fire and go away in peace. <laughs> Jeremiah warned the people of Judah and Egypt that they would get swept away in the destruction of Egypt and they would die alongside the Egyptians. The Lord was going to show his people why they should have why they should have listened to him by saying King Nebuchadnezzar to destroy the land of Egypt. But when his people foolishly trusted instead of him, they would be killed in the same way their brother, their brethren, and Jerusalem were killed. Since they disobeyed the Lord, he was going to punish them and make them an example of what happens when when you are stubborn when you are stubbornly disobedient. If you stubbornly and hard, heartily disobey the Lord many times, eventually God's going to give you over to your sin. God's mercy and grace are not unlimited. Constant disobedience without repentance is the unforgivable sin because it's the rejection of his salvation. The end result and it is eternal destruction in the lake of fire. As believers, we need to make sure we are obedient to the Lord always and rely on His Holy Spirit daily to resist temptation and sin. When we do sin, we need to ask God for forgiveness and turn from our sin. The Lord is the only one we can trust and depend on. Our flesh is very deceiving and only seeks to drag us to hell. Pride truly does come before destruction because it's the root and source of all sin. Our feelings are the are the simple nature. And naturally, we don't want to hear the truth. Trusting in your feelings only leads to disaster because it means you arrogantly trust yourself and believe you are God. We need to listen to the truth of God's Word and conviction from the Holy Spirit. The only way to restrain the sinful flesh is by surrendering ourselves to the Holy Spirit's power every single day. Alright. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining me today. I really hope that God used this to encourage you. And remember to comment and subscribe. I look forward to hearing your comments. Thank you for listening, and God, God bless. All glory be to Christ Jesus alone. He deserves it all. Good night.